Welcome to another edition of Eye on Education. I'm your host, Ed Leishas. And the last time we met, we had Bobby Bagley and the health department on, and it was the beginning of the discussion and the reaction to the pandemic COVID-19. Today, we're in our seventh week of teaching remotely. And we're joined by members of the administrative staff for the Nashua School District. And we're here to say thank you to the Nashua teachers as part of Teacher Appreciation Week. Joining us today, we have Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jamal Mosley, Assistant Superintendent for Elementary, Dr. Garth McKinney, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary, Ms. Donna Fitzpatrick, Mr. Robert Chiopa, the Director of Student Services in ENL, Ms. Marsha Bagley, Director of Special Education, Ms. Jenny Armateros, ELL Communications Coordinator, and Dana O'Gara, the Director of Human Resources for the Nashua School District. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. Uh, it's, it's a pretty momentous time uh, in our country and here in our city. And in fact, uh, the class of 2020 will long be remembered and have already experienced more than many of us have in our lifetime. I mean, they were born around the 9-11 crisis and they'll be graduating in a pandemic atmosphere. But I saw a quote the other day that said that they were unstoppable, born around 9-11, unbreakable, graduating during a pandemic, and undefinable because the class of 2020 was made for greatness. And they were made for greatness by what those of us who are Nashua natives have known for a long time, the fabulous school district teaching staff, professional staff that we have here in Nashua. And I'll start with Dr. Mosley. It has been some challenging times, but I think that uh, everyone from the educators to the paras, to the uh, staff, to the custodial, to the kitchen folks have stepped up uh, big time uh, over the last seven weeks. Yeah, thank you, Ed. I just wanted to take a moment uh, to just first thank the teachers um, and, you know, for all of their work during this uh, pandemic and this time. Uh, we could not have done it without them. Uh, I think we, you know, just think about this for a second. We are a district of 11,000 kids, um, 17 different, 17 schools, and we were given one week, just one week, to develop a process for transitioning from what we call in-school instruction to remote learning with curriculum um, and workflow. And the teachers have done, and the administrators, the principals, and the assistant principals have done an amazing job in that endeavor. What people do not know and what they don't quite see, but I'm glad that we're here in this format. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Kinsella, can you just take your uh, stay safe icon off for a second? Um, I just wanted to first, you know, it's never easy to do this, Ed. And as soon as we decided to uh, break for um, our schools and we decided to um, stop schooling, so to speak, because of the COVID-19, the people you see uh, in, this, uh, in this arena uh, were very instrumental in just rolling up their sleeves every day at eight o'clock and saying, how are we gonna make this work? And uh, for about five weeks every day, committed to not just presenting problems, but solutions to uh, all of the challenges that, that we faced then and now. And I cannot thank the directors who are here right now, um, making this district work, never saying no, always trying to make a solution for all of our challenges that have been presented to us. The assistant superintendents have been great um, in terms of just communicating to our principals expectations. There are no easy answers. There's no easy solutions. I'm trying at it. Um, I also want to thank uh, Ms. Kinsella who just came on. And um, the hardest part about this, Ed, really is meeting. And meeting is a challenge. And she has been great with the facilitation of trying to get this out, keeping track of not just my schedule, but everyone's schedule and getting 
critical information to um, from me to the principals, to the assistant superintendent, to the board. Um, and it's just been a tremendous, tremendous amount of teamwork and effort. And it would not have happened without the directors here, the administrative assistant. Um, I, I don't see Greg here, Greg Rodriguez, Dan Donovan, um, Gabby, um, and if I'm forgetting someone, oh, plant ops, plant off staff. I have to say plant off staff because they get mad if I say anything else. And I, I don't know why she's not on this call too, but um, I think the person I've called probably the most during this time, literally called, um, is Stacy Hines. And Stacy Hines has done a tremendous amount of work just getting the information and communication out. And in this environment, it, um, it takes a lot longer because we're not seeing people face to face. And I would say that the clarity of the messaging always needs to be what I call run through several filters before it, it, it's posted. So I just can't thank enough to our, our faculty, to our directors, to our admins. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone, but I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, to all of those individuals, to the board as well, uh, board members, and, and to the parents who I know it's been a challenge with our kids, and trust me, I have three kids of my own. I know how challenging it can be to do remote learning, but we're gonna get through this. We gotta stay positive, find some routines, and certainly keep our kids in mind. As I uh, watched the different news shows uh, the other day, uh, there was a comment that uh, had seven weeks ago, the state of New Hampshire said, we're going to put into place a remote learning process for education in the state. And they'd form a couple of committees and we're gonna report back and roll it out in 2024. Some people might think uh, four years might be quite a, uh, quite a challenge. Seven weeks ago, as you pointed out, Dr. Mosley, they had one or two weeks to put it together, roll it out. And Garth, uh, I want to start with you at the elementary level. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what does the, the teaching and learning remotely look like uh, here in Nashua? Uh, right now, it looks like um, a half day of teacher instruction, um, some morning meetings with the whole class. Um, if you follow some of the schools on Twitter, you'll see a uh, whole school classroom Zoom meetings and kids um, sharing. Uh, they've done theme days of hat days and spirit days. And then our teachers have also followed up and done individual conferencing with kids, um, some direct skills instruction, and certainly coaching up and collaborating with parents uh, to support the learning at home. So um, I think our elementary teachers have done an amazing job in a short period of time. Um, and who would ever thought that preschool or kindergarten would be doing remote instruction. Um, and Ed, you said four years. I think the five to seven weeks we've had feels like those four years all combined in one. So um, kudos to all the uh, elementary teachers out there. Thank you for all you do. Donna, is it easier on the secondary level than uh, are the teachers there face similar or different challenges? Um, I think probably uh, different challenges. One of the things that um, we've worked hard at is Fortunately, because of this nationwide, a lot of different platforms have opened up free for teachers to utilize. And for example, all the science courses at the high school needed to be able to continue with some of their work that they were doing. So they've been using YouTube videos of this person's science guy. And also Labster has virtual labs. So they're able to conduct virtual labs on the computer. So um, I think that the teachers have just been outstanding in supporting each other and sharing these um, different resources that they have available to them that they haven't always had available. And I will say, you know, the teachers have worked tremendously hard. And one of the really positive outcomes, in my opinion, is the increase in teacher supporting teachers and collegiality that this has brought about is a really positive outcome of a very negative situation. So um, at the middle school, we had programs that were already um, online programs. So it was a little easier for the teachers to access that, but they had to adjust the curriculum for remote learning. So they have done a tremendous amount of work. And I really appreciate how caring the staff is in this district. It's just, 
it's overwhelming how dedicated they are to, to working hard with the kids and, and doing the best they can in this remote learning environment. Dr. Murphy, what, what have been some of the technological challenges that the district faced being thrust into this? Well, for one thing, the challenge is that our Friday meetings have not gone very well due to Garth McKinney's inability to send <laughs> Zoom meetings on time. I mean, this has been a real issue here. And we, we are looking, you know, at some point to replace Garth as the sender of Zoom meetings. So, uh, no, in all seriousness, Ed, you know, and a little inside joke there. But uh, the challenge is really, as I said earlier before, is to um, coordinate um, you know, the, the, the information and really, you know, we're no longer been able to run down to each other's offices and have those discussions um, and to, 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 to talk about these things. Um, and so we really have to rely heavily on, 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 on email and, and, you know, learning and, and transitioning from what, what I call face-to-face -face is really like moving towards um, a workflow going online. Um, I'm not really sure about this yet, Ed, and I can certainly get back to you. Um, but you know, now that we're moving to remotely, we just want to make sure kids have the right devices and the time to do the the, the, the devices. And so we, you know, I, I wish that Greg Rodriguez was here, our technology director. He's done a fabulous job. Um, but he has also um, been able to uh, provide our students with with our with with with, with, with one to ones. The second piece is, and, and I'm not going to let her off the hook, I want to hear her voice too, is Yeti's is our ELL coordinator, and I mean ELL communication coordinator, and she's done a fabulous job with reaching out to parents and making sure that our email, that we communicate with them in a way that digitally that they can hear us. Any thoughts on that, Yeti, that you can share with us? Well, I have to say that we have been very creative at, you know, just finding out new methods of communications with our non-English speaking families. And one of those methods have been, of course, connecting via phone using the, the different um, free software out there like Google Voice, for example. So teachers and ELL workers, they can connect with their families without having to use their personal information. And we have also been providing interpreters and translators um, to you know, facilitate this communication. Uh, you know, besides the Google Translate software, uh, free conference calls, websites, anything that's, you know, at hand and can facilitate that communication. But without the teacher support, none of this would have been possible. So I just want to highlight the amazing work that they've been doing, of course, to, you know, just provide communication to ELL students and their families. And I just want to say thank you, you know, as a parent, um, as a community member, as a district employee, um, for creating such an amazing environment for our children, for those sleepless nights that they've been, um, you know, just planning those lessons for being supportive um, for our students and being very patient throughout this trying time. Um, again, thank you so much. You know, you're the reason that my kids are doing so great in school. And again, thank you for your support. Jenny, how many students do we have uh, in the ELL program uh, in Nashua? You know, I'm not really sure about the number of students. Um, I think this would be a response I'm, for Bob. I'm pointing down. Bob's down. As well. <laughs> Bob would know the Look, exact he, number. Bob, Bob like, show how many how many students ELL in the in the district? Total total is about uh, 1,250. So it's 1,250 families that uh, had to be addressed, uh, especially those that didn't have the, the, uh, the equipment, the computers, the connections. And, uh, you know, Dr. Mosley, it brings me back to another point with you. What would you like to see the city do to uh, close this uh, accessibility gap, the digital divide here in Nashua? Well, first of all, Ed, I would just say that the city and the schools have been working great uh, in great partnership uh, during before the pandemic and then during this pandemic. Um, I, I would like to say that uh, the city has done it, its share in just keeping us abreast and, and really supporting the schools. They've, they've, they've done that and I've really been great with that. Uh, I, I, I think that, you know, there are some challenges out there that are unforeseen. And uh, I think that, excuse me, 
that I would like to see. Um, with that said, there are some challenges that um, if you're not in education, you don't know the intricacies of it, that, that certainly that we're running into. Um, so I, one of the things I think is going to come up in terms of city support is always around the budget. And, you know, we're, we're, we're a growing district and not growing just in numbers, but growing in need too. Um, the needs of our kids, social emotional pieces. One of the board members said to us, um, asked a question. I didn't have the answer, Ed. It was like, after all of this pandemic, what are the needs that are going to come of these kids? What are some of the regressions that, that are going to happen as a result of not having full access to a teacher or even physical resources? What are the needs of our kids now that they're going to be transitioning back eventually in a different environment? And finally, Ed, you know, I think this is a really good segue into our kids who are who have special needs, our kids who are the most needy. And this, the, some of the challenges with remote learning is that it doesn't work for everyone. And we have to acknowledge that. And one of the things I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to our special education director, Marsha Bagley, who's doing wonderful work, wonderful work. But yet some of our kids struggle with that. Some of our kids who are special needs, who, who need the adaptive curriculum, who need speech and language, aren't necessarily getting those services because of, of the COVID-19. So I think some of the things in talk, talk about need, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Bagley and talk about the positive thing, but certainly some of the needs we need in terms of special ed. Masha, would you like to add anything? Um, sure. So I just, our teachers, our special ed teachers, paraeducators, related service providers, they have been superstars during this, this whole pandemic um, because we have IEPs that need to be followed and IEPs are individualized education plans. Um, and so the teachers and the related service providers have been working hard to make sure that all of the students have access to services. Um, some of our students, it's not an appropriate platform for them to learn um, remotely. So we've been creative in coming up with other ideas for providing those services. Um, our staff are in constant contact with the families and um, they have just been amazing. I'm, I'm so proud of the work that our special ed staff has done in these uh, what are we, six weeks in now? <laughs> Feels like years. Year. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I do, I just have um, something to share. We, I have this plaque in my office that I brought home with me and it says everything is figure outable. And that's become our mantra in special ed. Everything is figure outable. And we've done it. We've figured it out and we've run with it. And I, I'm just so incredibly proud of the work that's been done in Nashua for our students with IEP. What, what are some of the unique challenges that your staff faces, Marsha? So some of our students um, are significantly impaired and require um, uh, supports and services that require hand on, hands-on activities. And um, being remote, that's, an, that's a challenge. Um, and impossible, but our, some of our teachers have um, worked it out that they do Zoom calls with the parent and um, provide the parent with ideas. Um, in our Google Classrooms, each of our staff have Google Classrooms posted and they post activity ideas for the parents to work with the student. For example, one of the ideas from an occupational therapist was to create uh, an indoor, um, obstacle course and she had her daughter uh, modeling the obstacle course and it was you know rolled a towel rolled up and have your student jump over or have your child step over depending on their ability um, so they've just been incredibly uh, creative and um, I think being a special educator and teacher but special educator especially it's it's in our nature to be creative and um, the challenges that we face people are coming up with solutions before they even, they even think about it as being a challenge. They're, they've just been incredible. Our sign language interpreters are interpreting lectures and the teacher of the deaf figured out how to do a picture in picture so that the student can look, watch the, the um, lecture happening, but also have access to the interpreter within the same video. And this is pretty much being done on the fly because yes. there is no template for this. No, literally five days and um, people just took it and ran. And uh, we 
you know, everybody is feeling the stress and we're all exhausted, but uh, we have not had complaints about, you know, this is too much, this is too hard, we can't do this. Uh, it's evident that the staff in Nashua care about the kids in Nashua and they're doing everything they can to make sure that the kids continue to receive the services that they require in order to succeed. That's a great segue into Dana O'Gara, who is the HR director. Uh, the the drastic change, uh, I, I'm sure the out of contract direction that may have taken place uh, with all of this, Dana. How is ha, have you been inundated, or has have things gone fairly smoothly in your area? So it's been a transition much like everybody else has gone through. The HR department is still working full time. We're working remotely. Sometimes we have to pop in the office to get things. Um, right now, we're experiencing a lot of verifications of employment, either with um, unemployment or health and human services. And apparently a lot of people are redoing their mortgages. So we've been doing that. We also have just started on open enrollment and all of our employees who are benefit eligible should be receiving an individual letter with their benefits on it. And um, they, if you're changing something, they need to enroll. Um, and I think that's about it. We've been carrying on. Um, we it's we're going to be renewing teachers and everything, and we're going to be hiring for teachers. the The thing that I'm most um, sad about is that every year we we usually have our own annual teacher job fair. Right. Where in March or April, we say, "Come on in," and all the administrators are at Nashua High North, and we get to sit down and interview teachers, and we haven't. We can't do that this year. So we're looking towards virtual interviews, but I'm sure um, that's going to have an impact on our hiring process for when we return. Thank you so much, uh, Dana. Uh, Donna, what are some of the most, uh, what are some of the online tools that are being used to teach some of the more um, unique classes in the high school level? Um, well, so for some of our CTE classes, the culinary teacher actually has been buying ingredients and doing a Zoom, showing kids how to make different um, things, baked goods, meals, those sorts of things. So he's actually been more or less doing a cooking show. <laughs> um, and as I said earlier, the all the sciences are using the Labster virtual lab, so they're able to conduct, conduct labs virtually. Um, teachers are using um, open platforms that weren't previously opened. Our um, science teachers have been using Amplify, which we adopted this year, and it has a lot of online components to it. The big challenge there has been getting um, sort of refiguring how it's going to happen because it's in remote uh, or remote environment. Um, our social studies teachers have gotten access to a lot of platforms. A lot of the museums have opened up and done free um, shows so that the art and um, the UAs have the ability to share that. I did a board member, which I thought was amazing. A board member had said that her child participated in a group Zoom and they did a concert, a group Zoom concert which is really nice for the kids. And I'm sure that the parents enjoyed that as well. Um, so, oh, and our careers in education teachers have actually, the students have been invited to join in other classes of younger children to sort of participate in that process, which they would do if we were in school. We do run a nursery school at South. And uh, so they've had the opportunity to participate virtually in some of those experiences. Um, our world language teachers had gone to a digital platform already. So I believe the tr transition was maybe a little easier for them because they had been working in an online platform already. Um, but I'm sure that I'm leaving different programs out. I do wanna say one of the groups that I think is uh, we should be recognizing 
specifically is uh, we are worried about the social emotional state of our students. You know, the families, people are all dealing with their own things. Our counselors have been great. They've been doing a lot of outreach. They have been working with kids, working with families, being supportive and fulfilling a role that I think is crucial to people's mental health and well-being. So I just want to put a shout out to the counselors as well. We kind of left them off the list. Another challenge to the teachers at all levels has been the fact that uh, their children at home, whether mm -hmm. they live in Nash or outside the district, but their children are being educated the same way. And, you know, when mom or dad get home, uh, it may be time to go right into working with their child to uh, help them with whatever their assignment of the day had been. And, and that's going to add an additional toll, I think, on, on the teaching staff uh, here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And partly what we say, what, uh, what we've been promoting at is that number one, take a breath, you know, um, and I think that's very important. Literally take a breath. Second thing is that honestly, this is, this is a different environment and partly, I don't care if you're a teacher, superintendent, parent, director, um, lawyer, doctor, the most important thing during this time or practice is to develop some type of routine for yourself. And whether that's getting up early, doing some schoolwork, and then going for some physical activity and not staying in the house uh, as long. And that goes for adults, that goes for kids. It's just recommended. You can't force adults to do it, but also kids as well. Whether it's walking around the neighborhood, cutting the grass, walking around the house or nothing. Just coming up with a, a, a schedule for yourself to do your schoolwork, to get some what I call physical and mental and wellness into you and also keep things in perspective. Some days, the days sometimes mesh together and every day feels like a Sunday night and sometimes every day feels like a Friday night. But the idea is to stay you know, focused and but also develop a routine as well. We, we, must, we must recognize, excuse me, I'm looking here. I can have my screen here to the public and to the ed and then I'm looking outside and some of the light that's shining on my side of the head here is the sun. And so the sun is coming out um, and, you know, with the good weather coming, you know, I'm hoping that it'll promote more wellness and also responsibility too, to continue practicing social distancing, um, but also to, to make sure that we practice uh, good habits uh, for adults and for our kids. Yeni, uh, your challenge is not only the students that are using English as a second language, but many of their parents don't speak English at all. So they they can't perhaps afford their child the same kind of help as, as I could as a parent with, with my child. Uh, how, are, how are you dealing with them and what can you offer them in terms of assistance in your program? Well, Ed, I think this is a great question. Um, you bring up a good point. I think that family partnerships are, at this time are key to success. And even though we are doing the remote learning, I'm trying to foster you know, and partner with families um, throughout this time, because now parents of English language learners have become the team home guide, as you would say, for learning that is happening on a different languages. And they are juggling multiple concerns and stresses. And this is why we kind of, um, you know, just stress regular communication in their home language to build that strong partnership. And some of the lessons that I've learned about communicating um, successfully throughout this time during the COVID pandemic, or just learning their family's preferred methods of communication. Some families are more comfortable um, I don't know, communicating through texts or maybe emails. And I just wanna recognize while I say this, the amazing work that ELL liaisons, workers, paraprofessional and district interpreters are also doing throughout this time. They are helping facilitate this communication. They are communicating with families. They are um, doing an amazing job being the bridge between the teachers and the parents. And again, without them as well as, you know, the ELO teachers or, or the education staff, it, it wouldn't be possible um, to make this visual learning, distant learning a success. It's Teacher Appreciation Week and we're talking to the leadership of the Nashville School District about uh, what's been taking place these past seven weeks. And in addition to the educational uh, and learning uh, programming that has been going on, uh, Dr. Mosley, you made reference to the uh, plant operations folks. Uh, 
Yeah. And they've taken advantage of the schools being closed to go through and do a super cleanup. Well, first of all, I think the plan ops have done a tremendous amount of, of cleanup and support for not only just for us, but also for the city. Uh, I recognize that they will have helped with the creation and construction of our temporary hospital over at uh, South. They've also, you know, I consider them, you know, on the front lines as well, because they're the ones doing the cleaning. If you know anything about uh, COVID-19 is that it, it rests on surfaces. And so they've been doing tremendous amount of work getting our buildings eventually ready for us to enter. But also when we've been doing the transition at some point, we did have faculty coming in and grabbing their items. And as they would grab items and go into the building, the custodian, the, the plant ops staff were there to help clean up, but, but also to assist as well. And, and they continue to work through, through, through this uh, pandemic. So I have a lot of admiration, respect, and, and I really appreciate all the work and responsibility that they have taken uh, so far. In that same vein, the food service folks have kept up with breakfast and lunches uh, during all this to the students, yes? Again, you, you, you mentioned when I think of a superhero, you know, we, 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 I, I have to commend uh, Dahlia Dago, our food service director, who has just done amazing work. Um, and has directed her staff in collaboration with the United Way to provide uh, food for our kids uh, every day. And yesterday we had a vacation day, but also that wasn't a vacation for, for Dahlia. She was out there making sure the lunches were served and our kids were fed. And not only that, but also uh, really the coordination of it. And Ed, it takes a lot to coordinate this. Coordination is just as important as making the lunches because you can make the lunch, but have no one to eat them. So it's important that not only are you making the lunches, but you are delivering them to areas throughout the entire city to make sure that the kids are consuming them and doing it. Uh, do, excuse me, not doing, making sure that the kids are consuming the lunches, but they also do the right thing when they have those lunches. And we, we promote lunch uh, service to all of our kids. Um, and we're not you know, counting, we just make sure that everyone is fed. And that is certainly a prodigious undertaking in uh, Dahlia Dago and, Mike Affelberg and all of those individuals, I just want to say thank you. There's still many challenges ahead. And Garth, as we wind down this school year, what are the biggest challenges facing uh, your teachers in the elementary level to get to the conclusion of this year? Uh, getting through the conclusion of this year, um, closing up classrooms, how do teachers retire and take their things with them? How do we acknowledge the teachers that have had you know, decades of service? And then how do we transition to the summer and what does that look like? Do we have summer programs? How do we continue feeding kids and clothing kids, providing uh, Chromebooks and digital access? So, um, and beyond that, what does the fall look like? So we're trying to keep looking ahead, um, but we're also trying to find creative ways to celebrate the end of the year for our fifth graders who usually have a ceremony or a celebration. It might look different this year, but we are gonna acknowledge them and uh, wish them well. Well, you all stepped up and have done a wonderful job. And recognition-wise, uh, the National Alliance Club usually does a Teacher of the Year. And this year, they have voted to uh, recognize and honor the entire Nashville School District teaching staff, as well as the other public and pri uh, other private schools here in Nashville. Recognize them along with police, fire, public health. And that will be done in the fall once things uh, open up a little bit. And uh, it, it's a small drop in the bucket, but we uh, just felt that as a club that uh, they always go above and beyond their calling. But this year it was extra special. And uh, uh, I think, and I know you as administrators are very proud of what's been done and uh, hope that some normalcy can return in the fall. I want to thank all of you for being with us here today and uh, contributing to uh, a salute to uh, the teachers and Teacher Appreciation Week. Our guests have been Dr. Jamal Mosley, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Garth McKinney, the Assistant Superintendent for Elementary, uh, Ms. Donna Fitzpatrick, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary, Mr. Bob Chiopa, Director of Student Services in ELL, Ms. Marsha Bagley, Director of Special Education, Ms. Jenny Armateros, ELL Communications Coordinator, and also uh, Dana O'Gara, the HR Director for the National School District. Thank you all for what you do and for uh, making the, 
an untenable situation, a good working situation. You're all to be commended along with your staffs. Well, thank you, Ed. Everybody. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. You, Ed. Thank you. You've been watching Eye on Education. I'm your host, Ed Licious. Thank you and be safe. During Teacher Appreciation Week, I want to thank all of our teachers who are working hard to teach our kids remotely. Believe it or not, it is harder to try to teach kids over the internet than it is in the classroom. Thank you to everything you're doing, keeping our kids learning during this pandemic. Keep up the good work.